Hello and welcome to another Happily Letter After tutorial. For those of you who've been keeping up with the emails and the YouTube videos, I am so sorry. It's been a crazy few months and crazy end of the year, uh, last year and beginning of this year. So sorry for the delay in getting another tutorial. Um, but today I'm going to show you how to do negative space lettering. Uh, so it's going to look something like this, not exactly this one, it's just the example one, which actually I did in a different variation. So um, like you can, I still haven't decided whether or not I like it better with the white background or how I like it, but um, yeah, it's something I'm still trying to decide on. And if you hear noises in the background or meowing, sorry, my cat is restless today. Okay, so to get started... Let's get our new canvas, and I like to do what I named my large square, and I think I passed it. So I have one that I saved in here, over here. So I do 3,000 by 3,000 pixels. It works best if you have a square canvas for this project. And then you can get any brush. Um, I'm going to go to my recent so that I can easily grab it and I have a sketching pencil that I use and there's uh, default pencils um, that you can use for this as well and I'm just going to grab a random color and it doesn't matter what color you do, it doesn't matter but the first thing we're going to do is we are going to draw a circle on our canvas and then we're going to tap with one finger so that it's a perfect circle. Let go and then with the arrow tool we're going to make sure we have snapping and uniform turned on. Doesn't matter that the uniform part, but we want these double orange crosshairs so it's exactly in the center. And then we can click off. All right, so that's our first layer. And we're going to do another layer on top of that. We're going to go to the wrench icon. And where it says add, we're going to add text. And I'm going to do, let's do the letter S. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have a nice large, uh, a nice thick font for this. So right now it's on in our Ina one. Uh, it's like a, I think it's like the default for uh, Procreate, but you can change the font to whatever you want. So I have a bunch of fonts in here. Some of them came with it. Some of them I downloaded. I don't remember which was which anymore. Um, but you can go ahead and you can play around, figure out, okay, which which uh, font do I like best? And, you know, for it depends on the letter you're going with because some letters you might like um, one font better than the other. I wouldn't do something like this where it has a thin. You want it to be thick, but you also want there to be negative space because when you go to do your doodling, it's going to look kind of weird. And it's, it's not going to be easy to decipher because it's... Basically, your doodles around your shape are going to be what people are going to see. So, um, you want it to be something that kind of has a good balance. You don't want any thin strokes on it, which if there is, you can omit them. Like if it's got like a flourish on it, you can you can just omit the flourish. I wouldn't do any cursive script fonts like this. I mean, this one's thicker, so you might be able to, but that little thin area wouldn't, you know, be seen very easily. This one has too many thin lines. Again, you want to try to stick with something that's kind of thicker. Um, and go with that, like, caviar is always a good choice. Um, then there's the copper plate. Damascus has a nice one. But again, you want to be careful that you have some spacing. This one has, it doesn't have a lot of spacing, but we can stick with that Ina and we can go with, we'll do semi-bold and we'll hit done and we can hit our arrow tool instead of changing the font size and then just drag out these corners and we can get it centered. All right, so what I'm gonna do, because, because of the font and the height and everything is different, so what you can do is on your layers, you can tap on it and then you can rasterize it. So now it's a shape and it's no longer text. It's a shape. You cannot edit this as text. So if you wanted to change it to the letter P, you can't. You're stuck with the S now. 
because it's a shape instead, but it makes it so that now we can make sure it's exactly centered. So there, now it's exactly centered because when you have a font, the thing is sometimes your X height and Y height on the top and bottom, it's different and it depends on how the font was set up. So this just makes it so that it's definitely in the middle. So now we have our circle and we have our font. And so what we can do now is, um, and actually this font we can drag underneath our layer two because we're gonna need that for drawing. We can click on this N here and we can drag the opacity down a little bit because it'll, that way we're not distracted. And now we can go ahead, tap on the layer two and we can start drawing. So let's go to the disk view and we'll double tap on the bottom so we can get black. And you can use whatever colors you want. So if you wanted to do solid black, solid purple, solid green, that's fine. I'm gonna show you how to do that rainbow look that I got. So I like to start with black first. And um, in my brush set that I have, if you have my lettering brush set, I'm going to use this medium round monoline brush. And I'm just doing it for my recent because it's easier than having to scroll back and forth. So the first thing you wanna do is decide what kind of designs you wanna do. And if you think back to the one that I just showed you, that one I did a lot of uh, illustrations and lines. So let me go back to it so you can see it. Let's just do a preview of this. So when you look in here, you can see illustrations throughout. I have a pencil, I got a paintbrush, I have a couple little flowers in here leaves, um, lines, shapes like triangles, some hearts, some diamonds, some arrows, vines, um, little stars in here. And the filler, I have like um, lines and dots. So that's how I did it. And you don't have to do illustration. You don't have to do any illustrations at all. You can do just line work if you want. You can do where you um, trace the inside and I'll show you um, let me show you that actually on our, let's uh, go ahead and get back into our canvas here. And so like if you wanted to, like S's are a little more work because of all the curves, but if you wanted to just trace around it and just keep going and then do that all the way to the outside, you can do that, that's no problem. But it's, I think it's more fun if you do doodles. Now, if you have a perfectly symmetrical, um, like an A, or for instance, we have this S, you can do if you want to, and I will show you that right now, is if we go into here, into our canvas, and let's do the drawing guide. So we're gonna turn drawing guide on, and we're gonna edit our drawing guide. So let's do where we have symmetry. And so now we have the symmetry turned on and you can have it, um, so you can have it either this vertical or you could have it horizontal. So it doesn't matter which way you wanna do it, but you can do it this way. Now I'm gonna show you a trick. What you're gonna do is you can turn this line on. Um, let me see, do I wanna do horizontal or vertical? Basically this is just a guide. This is just a guide for you. So I'm gonna stick with the horizontal because I think we could do a lot of fun things right in here inside the curve of the S. So I'm gonna hit done and make sure this does not say assisted. Right now it has assisted. So what that means, if you haven't watched my other tutorials is when you, when you draw in here, it's gonna do the same thing on the other side. But because our S is not 100% symmetrical, it's gonna go over a part of it and we don't want that. So I will show you what, we're, what we can do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the drawing assist off and we're, come on, turn off, <laughs> there we go. So we are just using this line as a guide basically. So what we can do now is we can just start to draw anything we want. So actually I'm gonna draw a rose in here because I love roses and they're round and it'll fit perfectly in here. And doodle whatever your heart desires. It's better if you have it kind of tight like I had in that other one where there wasn't a lot of negative space on the piece itself because then it really um, 
popped with the with the letter you know and that's what you want you want that letter to stand out because this is again this is a lettering um tutorial so now i have this nice little flower in here and i can do a leaf And I need to fill in some of the space so I can go along. But you don't want to go over. You don't want it to be on the blue. Double tap with your finger or two finger tap to get rid of. And then you can just do some little dots, whatever you want to do in here. Um, it's really up to you what kind of um, design you want to do. And you can do whatever brush you want to. I'm just using this monoline brush because I like... Um, how it looks i think it's got that nice thick feel but again that's up to you how you want to do it and we're just kind of filling space so and another thing that i did when i was doing the other one is so i would start somewhere and i would do a, a flower and then you could start somewhere else you don't have to work your way from the outside or from the inside out or the outside in you can kind of go and then make things around it so I did something like this in mine where I did a flower off to the side and I just kind of worked around it that way. And you can do whatever doodles, whatever shapes. You can do um, line work, dot work, um, anything, anything that comes to your mind that you want to do. Um, it's really sky's the limit with this. It's all based on what you would like. Try not to go over your circle. You wanna kinda of keep it in the circle. So I'm just kind of um, drawing some leaves here. Oops, trying to get it to connect. I normally would do just one long stem, but because we have um, the symmetry going here and um, I'm doing this right at the edge and I don't normally do it at the edge. It makes it somewhat trickier, you know? So I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple little couple little dots in here. You don't have to do dots. You don't have to do all this. That's really up to you what you want to do. Um, and turn your canvas. If you do two fingers, you can turn your canvas. I have mine set so I don't um, make marks with my fingers, um, but you may not. There's settings you can do that with. I won't show you that today, but maybe in a future tutorial if you guys would like. If you guys, um, if that's something that is troubling for you and you'd like to see that, leave me a comment and I can definitely do a little tutorial. Uh, some of the features that Procreate has um, that you may not may or may not know about. So just some simple things like this. And remember, we don't want to go over the line. So just keep that in mind when you go ahead and um, do this. And if you remember my um, tutorial that I did on um, patterns, it's kind of similar in a way for some of this. Some of this stuff kind of ties together. If you really think about it, some of these um, tips and stuff, they they kind of flow together with each other. Um, so it's, it's kind of fun. What you can do is you can just make some, if you like to do doodles, like actual like drawings and stuff. And I'm really bad at doing a star, like just freehand like this, but it's kind of, it. you know, the nice thing about this kind of piece is it looks cool because it's it's supposed to be sketchy. It's supposed to be raw. It's supposed to be, you know, different. It's not supposed to be perfect. So it's, it's kind of nice to have these imperfect shapes, you know? And so I'm drawing a lot bigger than I did in my piece. Mine took me, oh gosh, a couple hours. I was watching movies while doing it. Um, so it did take me quite a while to do Again, try to stay in your lines if you can, and you can always fill in your shapes if you want, if you want to fill it in, but if you don't like that, then you can, you know, undo it, of course. So just kind of keep playing with it and seeing where things look best, see how you can um, 
like what looks good to you. I actually threw a hidden Mickey Mouse into my piece um, that I did that I showed you guys. And maybe I will bring that back up on the screen and see if you can find it. That's kind of fun. I like to do swirly lines. But just random lines and it kind of gives the piece movement too when you have all this, you know? So it may not be perfect. This may not be perfect with the, when we do the flip because it might be slightly off, but that's okay. Because again, it's not supposed to be perfect. It's supposed to be more of a fun. This is kind of like one of those fun pieces to really get you um, thinking outside the box on how can I create something unusual? And this is kind of like, it's like a nice therapy, honestly, just letting go. It reminds me of like the coloring book style, you know, where you just kind of just, let it go. Whatever comes to mind, don't think about it too much. Just kind of go with it. And don't don't worry about messing up because nobody will know. There's no mess ups in this. Or as, you know, um, Bob Ross would say, happy accidents. This is like a perfect spot for a heart right there. Something back to when you were a kid and like, I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I would get bored in class and I would doodle. So think back to like, what kind of doodles would you do? I wouldn't do that S, you know, the one with the three. Everybody, everybody knew that one. But I wouldn't do that in yours. I mean, you could, but it might take away from your letter, depending. Um, you'd have to do it like really small, I would say, so it doesn't, you know take away the attention and I like to turn this around sometimes and see like where can I put some shapes another reason why I picked this s is so that it'll save time because because we can do that um, we can do the mirror on it um, you know, originally I was going to do a more complicated, I was going to do an ampersand or something, but this works a little bit better because for time purposes, you know, I can um, do this whole tutorial for you in real time instead of having to, um, to wait. And while we're doing this, I'll give you some tips of mine that I have, um, while drawing and while using Procreate and everything. So one tip that I like, and I don't know if I've shared this before, but I really like, um, I have the, the trifold um, case and I, I have it propped up a little bit when I draw. And I don't know if, if you have a uh, background in art, even if you just did it in um, high school, they do recommend that you um, you have your piece propped up and that you don't lay it flat like this while you're drawing. Now this is a small surface, so it's okay. It's not gonna like really hurt anything to have it, you know, like this. But if you're um, doing a big piece, it, it just makes it easier for perspective to have it propped up. So that's how I draw. But for tutorials, unfortunately, I cannot do that because there's, um, it's really hard for the videoing of this, but I just wanted to give you guys that tip in case you were unaware. But yes, it's, it's very helpful to have your um, canvas, or in this case, your iPad, um, set to a uh, angle of some sort because it makes it a little bit easier when you're trying to work on pieces. I should have done some more leaves over here, but I like, I really like to do leafy elements. This one's kind of turning a little dark. And what I like about this, 
this one is it's kind of you can kind of just go along and it's a good filler you know and that's okay because you need that and actually I'm not a big fan of oh shoot <laughs> I'm not a big fan of that little dot that happened right there, so I'll just erase it. And what I did was, because I had this brush selected, if you click and hold on the eraser, it'll do it with your current brush that you're using to draw with. So that's another helpful tip, in case you did not know. I'm going to do a regular star. And just keep doing... Yeah, it doesn't really matter how you do this. Again, this is just whatever way you want. So please don't follow me exactly because I doubt we're going to get the same results either way. And it's more fun to kind of create your own thing anyway and just kind of, this is a great one. If you're watching TV or if you're um, waiting in line for like, like if you're at a doctor's office and you're waiting or waiting somewhere, this is good. Even in a car, possibly, if it's not too bumpy of a ride. Um, so one of the reasons why I was not able to do tutorials for you because we were on a long car trip to South Carolina. And it was not ideal for filming, obviously. Um, we did that for Christmas. But... It's probably not going to be a regular thing. Um, but yeah, just fill in all these little areas you can that are not blue. And again, when you're around your S, you want to try to get close to it if you can. And on my R, I don't know if you noticed, but when I did the R, I did actually... Um, I did actually follow along with some of the, uh, like I just kind of went along some of the shapes to better accentuate it and everything. Um, let's see. You know what? I will do a Mickey Mouse in here. I like Disney, old school Disney, but I like Disney. And it's just, I think it's fun to have hidden things. And you know, you could always, if you do this for a friend or a family member as a gift with their initial or whatever, you could do, um, you could do hidden things that they like in here and then have a bunch of these little swirly lines and doodles around it. And oh my goodness, it would be so much fun. It'd be such a fun piece for them to like try to find all the images and they may never find them all within, you know, it might take them like a long time to find this stuff, but Think about how much fun that would be as a gift to just try to find all that stuff, you know? It's kind of like those hidden object games. All right, for time's sake, I'm just going to do some swirly stuff here. Um, some dots. Okay, now we have our design. Yay, okay. Now what we can do is we can slide to the left, or yeah, to the left, hit duplicate. Now we've got this other layer and we can go in here to our arrow and we are going to flip it vertically. And then again, and I'll, well, I'll show you why we have to flip it again. But see, if we do this, that's, Definitely not an S, it's more like a three. So we want to flip it again horizontally. Look at that, perfect, perfect, perfect. Now, if you wanted to make something that's completely unique, do the whole thing on your own. Now, letters like R and P and stuff like that, like you know, the one I did, um, they're harder because it's you have to kind of do the whole thing. Well, not necessarily harder, but it's more time consuming. So we can turn off this, we can turn off our circle, and we can even go in here and we can turn off our drawing guide because we don't need it anymore. Now, 
I will say this, I don't like that you can see a little seam here. So what we can do is in our layers, we'll pinch these two together because we don't need them separate anymore. And now let's go in and make it so there's not a seam because right now we have a seam and it's not pretty. So let's connect. Connect as best as we can. So now it looks like it's a seamless pattern. So we can extend, try to get it as close as you can. And we can add another line in here, or we can even do some dots. And it doesn't have to be perfect on the other side because then again, you know, it's making it so now it's, now it doesn't look like we just copied and pasted even though we did. I mean, it does, but at the same time, it doesn't if that makes sense. So there, now that is so much better, isn't it? I like it. Okay, now here is how we do our pretty colorful, um, our colorful lettering. So what I like to do is I like to click on this layer and I like to um, go to alpha lock. And there's many ways of doing this, but we're just gonna do it this way because this is for time, it's easier. And it does not matter what colors you use. Um, this is, you can use anything on the wheel. I just have a color palette that I'd saved from a long time ago. You're gonna wanna go to your airbrushing brushes. It's free, it comes with Procreate, and grab the soft brush. The size that I have mine at, let's see, I have the opacity at 85, and I have the size at 20%. And let's grab our first color, I'm gonna grab red. And again, you can do this in any way you want to. You can even color just, if you want it to, you can color your flowers certain colors and your leaves certain colors and have it be more, you know, um, design elemented that way, which that would be really pretty too. And I would love to see it. If you do that, please, please share with me. I might, after this tutorial, I may go ahead and do that with this one and have that as an option um, and post that, but on my Instagram, but, um, just start off and brush on one corner and I go down a little ways because you're going to blend and that's what's good about this um, airbrush and I'll grab the orange and lightly very lightly you don't want to do it hard so otherwise you're going to get a harsh line just kind of go over that and then I'll grab a yellow I don't like to grab the bright one because it's a little too bright and sometimes it makes it harder to see the designs. You just kind of keep going over. And then green, I'm gonna grab, do this green. And then I'm gonna get this blue right here, I think. Yeah, that's a nice blue, okay. See, now we have two hidden Mickeys in here. But see, this didn't take us long. And actually, see, there's got kind of a too hard of a line there. So it's just softer, do it softer. And let's do the purple. There, now we have our letter. And let me know what you think. Do you like it better with the blue or the white background? Or do you like it better with a black background? And um, you can always, so that you can kind of flip back and forth instead of changing the background color, you can go ahead, grab your black, drag it into a, a background layer. So then you can flip be between them. So you can try to see which one do you like. White, black, white, black. Um, black kind of gives it that scratch art look, which is kind of cool. But again, it's all up to you, whatever you prefer. But I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope this helped you um, discover a new way to do lettering and it's a fun way of doing um, a negative space lettering. And you can do this with whole words too. You don't have to just do one letter. I just, for this tutorial, it was a little easier to show you one letter, but um, have fun with it. Do different shapes. You don't even have to confine it to a circle. You can just do doodles around the letters and have it kind of trail off on the sides. and. Just let your creativity shine and see um, where it takes you. Till the next time, guys, stay creative and thank you again for joining me.